happens, the guy came in and he was asking for change. I gave him the change. And after that, he pulled out a gun and he's like, give me the money and I gave it to him. We did a preliminary investigation for an armed robbery of a deli that took place on a day where we were off. The next day, my partner and I came in, we reviewed the 61s, we looked up, saw the gunpoint robbery, we went out to the deli, reviewed the surveillance footage. We were able to identify a few distinct characteristics of the perp and the firearm. We decided to canvas the area that the crime took place, tried to backtrack where the subject came from before he committed the crime. So Rob suggested that we expand the search, basically driving the blocks. As we're coming up Group Avenue, we look over on Hancock Street and about mid-block, we see a guy matching the description, pretty much the same clothing and the exact same shoes. He's walking south on Group. We back the truck up, I get out of the truck, I walk up, as soon as I start talking to him, he takes off running. As he's running this way, he's digging in his back of his waistband. We both see the handle of a firearm come out of his waistband. As he rounds the corner, he runs across the street. Engaged in a foot pursuit by which he was trying to draw the firearm from his waistband. He ran a short distance before being taken down to the ground by us. We disowned him and placed him under arrest. After the fact, we were realizing how close we came to a potential deadly physical force situation and how fluidly we averted that by staying on top of him and letting everybody know where we were and what was taking place. Nobody wants to tell their problems to somebody they don't trust. A lot of people in the community develop a familiarity with us. They see us all the time. They see we're not just out going to jobs, we more so interact with them, we answer questions, they can call us or email us. We'll get text messages about something, complaints that normally would come through 311, now they'll tell us directly. Going to meetings and having discussions and talking to people and laughing and smiling, have people not be afraid of us because we're wearing blue. We have the same business owners. They can talk to us when there's problems. We have the same residents. So when there's issues there, persistent issues there, we know the information, we can pass it on. Work in a way that gives everyone the opportunity to be involved, as opposed to just watching the cops do something and leave. Explaining to them how things work, they're able to realize we're human just like them. We're not robots. On a daily basis, they're conferring with the squad and a lot of conferrals with the FIOs and the crime teams. We'll reach out to the NCOs and ask them if they've heard of anything in the area that may fit the description or the scenario of what went down. You have more resources out in the streets when you have the NCOs out there. And once the detectives leave the scene from the investigation, the NCOs will be out there still hitting the pavement and getting the questions and getting the information. And we'll help them by doing canvases or letting them know what we found on canvases. Bed size is as much of my home as it is anybody that lives here and I like that people want to get involved in cleaning up their own community. The NCOs are definitely changing the neighborhood. There's more interaction with the community. It's building a trust with the community and with us as cops. I can remember years ago, late at night, you hear shots and believe me, I don't hear that. I might hear maybe once or twice, but years ago you would hear when the weekend comes, you would hear it a whole lot. They know about the work that we're doing, so they're interested in engaging with us because they want to be a part of that. They see more policing around, and not just running in and running out, walking around, talking to people, and that's what we need. That's what we need.